Hi, you are on the channel, Forest Paths. My name is Ilya. I am pleased to present you a new documentary about the search for fossils. Together with the Samara Paleontological Society, we went to the Saratov region of Russia to study the outcrops of the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. The film turned out to be very rich in unique finds and knowledge about the prehistoric life of our planet. In this movie you will encounter prehistoric sharks, chimeras, aquatic reptiles, ammonites and many other interesting fossils. Let's go! You don't need a hammer to hunt for local fossils. The main search tool here is a sieve, which I assembled with my own hands. Here it is. A shovel is needed here. And here we need a piece of unnecessary banner. Now I'll explain why. The layer of sand in which shark teeth are found in large numbers is quite narrow. Only 15 to 20 centimeters thick. It differs from the other layers by the accumulation of phosphorites. Phosphorites are such small black stones. It is between these phosphorites that a lot of shark teeth lie. I need to get to this layer somehow. Now I'm taking a piece of an unnecessary banner. I put it inside. And on this piece of unnecessary banner, I bring down a narrow layer of sand with phosphorites. And here is the first shark tooth. He fell. What? Now, with the help of a banner, it is quite easy to pull out a layer of sand with phosphorites and shark teeth for further sifting. It's time to sort out the dropout. Now at the same time we will check how many shark teeth can be collected from one sieve. In addition to shark teeth, fragments of chimera bones, bones and teeth of aquatic reptiles, vertebrae and teeth of fish can be found in the sieve. Here I see a large vertebra of a fish. Look at the vertebra. You can find such fragments of fossil chimeras. It's a tooth. They lived in these prehistoric seas together with sharks 100 million years ago. Ah, oh, I pricked myself on something. So am I. Dear viewers, I will tell you about the dangers of hunting for shark teeth. Sharp ends of shark teeth can stick out of dense lumps of sand about which you can injure your hand if you carelessly sort through the rock in a sieve. Now let's count how many shark teeth we found in one sieve. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 
33. 33 plus 24. 57. My partner Yulia and I collected 57 shark teeth from one sieve. You saw for yourself how much sand I poured there for sifting. This is just an incredible result. Sharks appeared on our planet a very long time ago, about 400 million years ago and still live today. You are probably very interested in why only teeth have been preserved from sharks. Where did all the other bones go? The fact is that the main skeleton of a shark consists of cartilage. Cartilage, as is known, is preserved in a fossil state only in very rare cases, but the teeth consisted of a harder material. This is what helped the teeth to remain in the sand to this day. This small strip of sand, in which there is a large concentration of shark teeth, is called a lens. How did it form? 100 million years ago, this place was covered by the sea. Small depressions formed on the seabed, where a lot of bottom debris was carried away by the current. Basically, it was organic matter, bones and teeth of aquatic animals. Then this filled pit was filled with sand. Over hundreds of millions of years, Phosphorites have formed in former pits with organic matter and bones. Phosphorites are such small black stones. They are mainly composed of phosphorus. Phosphorus appeared on the seabed from organic matter. Among the phosphorites you can find interesting fossils, such as shark teeth, teeth of aquatic reptiles such as ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs. Bone fragments and vertebrae of fossil fish can be found. The age of these fossils is 100 million years. These rocks belong to the Cenomanian stage of the Cretaceous period. In the Cenomanian, Aquatic reptiles such as ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs and pliosaurs began to gradually disappear. Due to the fact that there are fewer of them, their niche in the food chain has been occupied by sharks. Therefore, it was at this time that sharks dominated the seas, therefore, a huge number of their teeth were preserved in the Cenomanian sands. In general, shark teeth can be found from the Devonian period, about 400 million years ago, to the present. But it was in the Cenomanian stage of the Cretaceous period 100 million years ago that they experienced their heyday and the best time of their existence on Earth. There are much fewer sharks now compared to that time. At this moment, the rock slowly began to collapse due to excavations at the level where shark teeth come across. You need to be careful and not allow the collapse of the rock on yourself. Otherwise, you may get injured and instead of an interesting search for fossils, you will spend time in the hospital.
Where are you, shark teeth? Someone's little vertebra. Shark's tooth. A fragment of a mollusk shell. Do I need it? I think I'll take it. Look at what a big shark tooth I found. Mm -hmm. Oh. How big he is. One such tooth is larger in volume than all the previous ones found in this sieve. I'm in shock. Just look at what a beautiful and big shark tooth. I am very glad that I found it. Not a megalodon tooth, of course, but among other finds this is the largest. Soon I will determine the type of shark to which this tooth belonged. We moved to a new place. This is an old abandoned sand quarry. The layers of the Cenomanian tier of the Cretaceous period also come to the surface here, and these layers are also 100 million years old. Once we have already sifted the sand, eight shark teeth were found in it. Not as much as last time. But the beginning has already been made. We will continue to sift through the sand in this place in search of interesting fossils. Dear friends, a piece of rock fell on me in the process of searching. Now I'm all dirty and covered in sand. Be careful, don't repeat after me. Well, I'm going to continue. We didn't stay in this place for long, we found some shark teeth. Now we are going to the next location. In addition, there were fragments of fossil chimeras and vertebrae of fish. The place, compared to the previous one, is not very rich in shark teeth, but there are still a lot of them here. For the first time I see that teeth can be collected right in the sand far from the seas where modern sharks are found. I was told that teeth and bones of fossil reptiles could be found here, but we never found them. 
The third location, in my opinion, turned out to be very interesting. We did not dig and sow sand there, but just took a walk and picked up what lay on top. At first I was unlucky. My partners were constantly finding something. Julia, for example, found a very good shark tooth. Plato found a tooth of a marine reptile. People were picking up large shark teeth, and I only came across fragments. As a result, before leaving for the fourth location, I, as the loser himself, was given various unnecessary fossils. On the way home, we stopped at the fourth location. We are here now. At this place you can find very beautiful ammonites, which consist of pyrite. We won't need a sieve here anymore. We will need a hammer or a shovel, because the ammonites are in this grey clay and to get to them, the clay needs to be dug. Let's try to do it. Just look at it. I found an ancient oyster. Very interesting. I'll take her with me. Good. Looking for ammonites. As soon as we started digging clay, we immediately found two very beautiful ammonites. Just look at them. Here is another ammonite, but it turned out to be too fragile. Little. Look how beautiful the ammonite is, and at first I didn't even notice it. Rib. Ah, it's broken. My partners told me that I was digging in the wrong place. It turns out that the ammonites in the former place are not beautiful enough. They were pretty rusty. And now look at the beautiful ammonites in this place. Ammonite consists of the mineral pyrite and a mother of pearl shell has been preserved on top. It's just a fragment of ammonite. This is a fiasco. Just look at what a big ammonite they gave me. I will put it in the most honorable place in my collection. When a hammer strikes the pyrite, a spark is struck. Pyrite, translated into Greek, is a stone that carves fire. flint according to ancient technologies. This is a victory. This is one of the best finds. Dear friends, we have extracted some ammonites in this place. The best and largest one got caught last. Here it is. All the other ammonites, though smaller, are also very beautiful. It was the first time I was in the Saratov region on an expedition, and this first time I remembered a huge number of finds. All these fossils are very interesting and diverse. It will take me a lot of time to analyze all the fossils and classify them. But all the findings will serve science. Thank you for watching this video. Put likes and subscribe to the channel. I hope you were very interested. До встречи.